Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Snowflake Summit 22 live from Caesars Forum in beautiful, warm, and sunny Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin. I've got the Chris and Chris show next. <laughs> Bear with me, Chris Dagnan joins us again, one of our alumni, the Chief Revenue Officer at Snowflake. Good to have you back, Chris. Thank you for having us. Chris Cruz also joins us, Director of Business Development, AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog at AWS. Chris yeah. and Thank Chris, you. welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good to be back in person. Isn't it great? It's There's so much better. No nothing yeah. like it. So let's talk, there's been so much momentum, Chris, D at Snowflake <laughs> the last few years. I mean, the momentum at this show since we launched yesterday, I know you guys launched the day before with partners, has been amazing. A lot of, a lot of change, and it's like this for Snowflake. Talk to us about AWS working together with Snowflake and some of the benefits in it from your customer, and then Chris G, I'll go to you for the same question. Yep. You know, uh, First of all, it's awesome. Like I, I, I just, you know, it's been three years since I've had a Snowflake Summit in person, and it's it's crazy to see the growth that we've seen. You know, I can't. We, our first cloud that we ever launched on top of was was AWS, and AWS is our our largest cloud, you know, in, in terms of revenue today. And they've been they just kind of know how how to do it right, and they've been a wonderful partner all along. There's been challenges and we've kind of leaned in together and, and figured out ways to work together, you know, and solve those challenges. So, been a, been a wonderful part, partnership. And talk about it, Chris G, from your perspective. Obviously, from a co-opetition perspective, yep. AWS has databases, cloud data yep. platforms. Talk to us about it. What was the impetus for the partnership with Snowflake from yep. AWS's standpoint? Yeah, well, well, first and foremost, the building on top of AWS. And, and so that by default makes them a great partner. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, Chris and I have been working together for, gosh, seven years now, and the relationships come a really long way. You know, when we first started off, we were trying to sort out how we were going to work together when we were competing and when we were working together. And you know, you fast forward to today, and it's, it's just such a good uh, relationship because both companies work backwards from customers. And, and so that's you know, kind of in both of our DNA. And so if the customer makes that selection, we're going to support them. Even from an AWS perspective, when they're going with Snowflake, that's still a really good uh, thing for AWS because there's a lot of associated services that Snowflake either integrates to or we're integrating to them. And so it's really kind of contributed to how we can really work together in a co-sell motion. Talk to us talk about that, the joint go-to-market and the co-selling motion from Snowflake's perspective. How do customers get engaged? Well, I, I think you know. Typically, we where we are really good at co-selling together is we identify on-premise systems. So whether it's you know some legacy Hadoop system, some legacy database solution, um, and they want to move to the cloud. You know, Amazon is all in on getting everyone to the cloud, and I think that's their approach you know, they've taken with us is saying we're really good at accelerating that that adoption and, and moving all these you know massive workloads into the cloud. And to Chris's point, you know, we've integrated so nicely into things like SageMaker and other, other tool sets, and we, we even have uh, exciting scenarios where they, they've uh, allowed us to use you know, some of their Amazon.com uh, retail data sets that we actually use in, in data sharing uh, via the partnership. So we continue to find unique ways to partner with, with our, our, our great friends at, at Amazon. Sounds like a very deep partnership. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're integrating to Snowflake and they're integrating to AWS. And so it, it just provides a great combined experience for our customers. And again, that's kind of what we're both looking for from, a, from both of our organizations. That customer centricity is, yeah. is, I think, the center of the flywheel that is both, that both of you, mm -hmm. your companies have. Yes. Christy, talk about the, the industry solutions specific, um, industry specific solutions that Snowflake and AWS have. I know we talked yesterday about the pivot from a sales perspective yes. that Snowflake made in recent months. Talk to us about the industries that you are help really targeting with AWS to help customers solve problems. Yeah, I think there's, you know, we, we're focused on a number of industries. I think, you know, some of the examples, like I said, I gave you the example of we're using data sharing to help the, the retail space. And I think it's, it's a really good partnership because some of the, you know, some companies view Amazon as a competitor in the retail space, and I think we kind of soften that blow when we actually leverage some of the Amazon.com data sets, and, and this is where the partnership's been really strong. In the healthcare space, in the life sciences space, we have, we have customers like Anthem where we're really focused on helping actually Anthem solve real business problems, not necessarily like technical problems. It's like, oh no, they want to get, you know, figure out how they can get the, the whole customer and take care of their whole customer and get them using um, the, the Anthem platform more effectively. So there's a really great, wonderful partnership there. We've heard a lot in the last day and a half on theCUBE from a lot of retail customers and partners. It seems to be a lot of growth in that. So there's so much change in the retail market. I was just talking with uh, Click 
and Snowflake about Urban Outfitters as an example, and you think of how what these companies are doing together and, and obviously AWS and Snowflake, helping companies not just pivot during the pandemic, but really survive. I mean, in, in the beginning with you know retail that didn't have a digital presence, what were they going to do? And then the supply chain issues. So it really seems to be what Snowflake and its partner ecosystem is doing is helping companies now obviously thrive, but it was really kind of like a, a, a go, no go sort of situation for a lot of industries. Yeah, and I think I think the the neat part of you know both the combined you know Snowflake and AWS solution is and a good example is DoorDash. You know, they had hyper growth and they could not have handled, especially during COVID. As we all know, we we all use DoorDash, right? We were just talking about a Chipotle, yeah. like you know, like <laughs> uh, and um, and I think they were able to really uh, take adv advantage of our hyper elastic platforms, both on the Amazon side and the Snowflake side, to scale their business and meet the high demand that they were seeing. And and that that's kind of some of the, the great examples of where we've enabled customer growth to really accelerate. Yeah, so. and, I, and I'd add to that, you know, while we saw good growth for those types of companies, a lot of your traditional companies saw a ton of benefit as well. Like another good example, and it's been talked about here at the show, is Western Union, right? So they're a company that's been around for a long time. They do cross-border payments and cross-currency you know, uh, exchanges. And you know, like a lot of companies that have been around for a while, they have data all over the place. And, and so they started to look at that and, and that became an inhibitor to their growth because they couldn't get a full view of what was actually going on. And so they, they did a, a lengthy evaluation and they ended up going with Snowflake. And, and it was great because it provided a lot of immediate benefits. So first of all, they were able to take all those disparate systems and pull that into Snowflake. So they finally had a single source of the truth, which was lacking before that. Uh, so that was one of the big benefits. The second benefit, and Chris has mentioned this a couple times, is the fact that they could use data sharing. And so now they could pull in third data. Now that they had a, a holistic view of their entire data set, they could pull in that third party data, and now they could get insights that they never could get before. And so that was another large benefit. And then the third part, and this is where the, the relationship between AWS and Snowflake is great, is they could then use Amazon SageMaker. So one of the decisions that Western Union made a long time ago is they use R for their data science platform. And SageMaker supports R. And so it really allowed them to dovetail the skill sets that they had around data science into SageMaker that they could now look across all of Snowflake. And so that was just a, a really good benefit. And so it drove the cost down for, uh, for Western Union, which was a big benefit. But the even bigger benefit is they were now able to start to package and promote different solutions to their customers. So they were effectively able to monetize all the data that they were now getting and the information they were getting out of Snowflake. And then of course, once it was in there, they could also use things like Tableau or ThoughtSpot, uh, both of which are available in AWS Marketplace. And it allowed them to get all kinds of visualization of data that they never got in the past. The monetization piece is, is interesting. It's so challenging for organizations, one, to get that single source view, mm -hmm. to be able to have a customer 360, but to also then be able to monetize data. When you're in customer conversations, how do you help customers on that journey start? Because the, the, their competitors are clearly right behind them, ready to take first place spot. How do you help customers go, all right, this is what we're going to do to help you on this journey with AWS to monetize your data? I, I think you know, it's everything from you know, looking at removing the silos of data. So one of the challenges they've had is they have these legacy systems and a lot of times they don't want to just take the legacy systems and throw them into the cloud. They want to say, we, we need a holistic view of our customer, 360 uh, view of our customer data. Um, and then they're saying, hey, how can we actually monetize that data? That's where we do everything from, you know, Snowflake has the, the data marketplace where we list it in the data marketplace, we help them monetize it there. Uh, and and we, we use some of the data sets from uh, Amazon to help them do that. We use the technologies, like, like uh, Chris said, with uh, SageMaker and, and other tool sets to help them realize the value of their data uh, in, a, in a real meaningful way. So this sounds like a very strategic and technical partnership. Yeah, well it, it's, it's technical and it's go to market. So if you take a look at you know, Snowflake, where they've, they've built over 20 integrations now to different AWS services. So if you're using S3 for object storage, you can use Snowflake on top of that. If you want to load up Snowflake with, uh, with Glue, which is our ETL tool, you can do that. If you want to use QuickSight to do your data visualization on top of Snowflake, you can do that. So they've built integration to all of our services, and then we've built integrations like SageMaker back into Snowflake. And so that supports all kinds of specific customer use cases. So if you think of people that are doing any kind of cloud data platform workload, stuff like data engineering, data warehousing, data lakes, it could be even data applications, cybersecurity, uh, Unistore type things. Snowflake does an excellent job of helping our customers get into those types of environments. 
And so that's why we support the relationship with a variety of, of you know, credit programs. We have a lot of co-sell uh, co motions on top of these technical integrations because we want to make sure that we don't only have the right technical platform, but we've got the right go-to-market motion. And I, I that's think, super important. Yeah, and I, I would add to that is like, uh, you know, one of the things that customers do is they make these large commitments to Amazon. And one of the best things that Amazon did was allow those customers to draw down Snowflake via the Mar AWS marketplace. So it's been wonderful to, to his point around the go to market, that was a huge issue for us. And, and again, this is where Amazon was innovative on, on identifying a ways to help make the customer have a better experience yeah. and put the customer first. And this, is, this has been you know wonderful partnership there. Yeah, it so, really has. Yeah. It's, been a great, it's been really good. Well, and the customers are here. Like we yeah. said, we're yes. north of 10,000 yes, folks total and customers are just chomping at the bit. There's been so much growth in the last three years from the last time, I, th I think I heard, the 2019 Silphink Summit had about 1,500 people and here we are at 10,000 plus now and standing room will make you know, the very big queue to get in, people turned away, pushed back to uh, um, an overflow area to be able to see that and that was yesterday. I didn't even get a chance to see what it was like today but I imagine it was probably the same. Talk about the, the when you're in customer conversations, where do you bring, from a GTM perspective, where do you bring Snowflake into the conversation? Obviously yeah. there's Redshift there. What does that look like? I, I imagine it follows the customer's needs, challenges, compelling exactly. events. Yeah, we're always going to work backwards from the customer need. And so that is the starting point for Kindly both organizations. And so we're going to you know, look at what they need. And uh, from an AWS perspective, you know, if they're going with Snowflake, that's a very good thing. Right, because one of the things that we want to support is a selection experience to our, our AWS customers and make sure that no matter what they're doing, they're getting a very good supported experience. And so we're always going to work backwards from the customer and then once they make that technology decision, then we're going to support them, as I mentioned, with a whole bunch of co-sell resources. We have technical resources in the field, we have credit programs, and, in, you know, and of course we're going to market in a variety of different verticals as well with Snowflake. If you take a look at all the industry clouds that Snowflake has spun up, financial services and healthcare and media and entertainment, uh, you know, those are all very specific use cases that are, are, are very valuable to an AWS customer. And AWS is going more and more to market on a vertical approach, and so Snowflake really just fits right in with our overall strategy. Right, sounds like very tight alignment there. That mission alignment that Frank talked about yesterday, I know he was talking about that with respect to customers, but it sounds like there's yeah. mission alignment between mission AWS alignment. and Snowflake. Yeah. Yeah. I live yeah. that every week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I brought up a pain point. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Oh. Guys, what's next in terms of use cases? Obviously we've been here for a couple days, I'm yeah. sure you've had tremendous feedback yeah. from, from customers, from partners, from the ecosystem. What's next? What can we expect to hear next? Maybe give us a preview of reInvent in <laughs> months. Preview of reInvent, yeah. Uh, no, well one of the things we really want to start doing is just you know, making the, the use case of, of launching Snowflake on AWS a lot easier. So what can we do to streamline those types of experiences? Because a lot of times we'll find that customers, once they buy a third party solution like Snowflake, they have to then go through a whole series of configuration steps and what can we do to streamline that? And so we're going to continue to work on that front. One of the other places that we've been exploring with Snowflake is how we work with channel partners. And you know, when we first launched Marketplace, it was really more of an app store model that was ISVs on one side and channel partners on the other, and there wasn't really a good fit for channel partners. And so four years ago, we retrofitted the platform and have opened it up to resellers like an SHI or SIs like Salam or Deloitte, who are top, two top SIs for Snowflake. Yep. And now they can use Marketplace to resell those technologies and also sell their services on top of that. So Snowflake's got a big you know, practice with Slalom, as I mentioned. So, you know, Slalom can now sell through Marketplace and they can actually sell that statement of work and put that on the AWS bill all by virtue of using Marketplace as that automation platform. Ease of use for customers, ease of use for partners as well. And that yes. ease of use is, it's no joke, it's, it's not just a marketing term, it's measurable and it's about mm -hmm. time to value, time to market getting customers ahead of their competition so that they can be successful. Guys, thanks for joining me on theCUBE today talking about nice what to be AWS. Back. Nice to be back in person. Isn't it yeah. nice to be back? It's great yeah. to be actually sitting across from another human. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for your insights, what you shared about the partnership and where it's going. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Thank All you. right, guys. Yep. For Chris and Chris, I'm Lisa Martin. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching theCUBE live from Las Vegas. I'll be back with my next guest momentarily, so stick around.